How many people think God's got a blessing with your name on it? All right. I need more hands next time, but you know. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Each and every one of you has a special gift from God, and you're giving a gift from God as well every time you show up for your community. So we got David Mormon singing this song for us. Give it up. He's got a he's got a run and go coach a soccer game. So let's do this. Listen to the lyrics of the song. And sing along. see you through. So keep your head up. Put a smile on your face. It's just another test and it won't last always. So get ready for your blessing. You've been hurting deep down inside. I'm here to encourage you that it's gonna be alright. Cause troubles and trials were meant to make you strong. Yeah, keep on believing, keep on holding on, and get ready for your blessing. said God has a blessing with your name on it but you just have to believe it to receive it God's got a blessing oh God's got a blessing God's got a blessing oh God's got a blessing and if you believe it say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. first verse said it makes no difference what you're going through God still has a blessing with your name on it but you just got to own it and believe it so no matter what happens in my day when I'm having a struggle I just say this struggle leads to my blessing and I accept it so I say God's got a blessing hey God's got a blessing God's got a blessing. Hey, yeah. God's got a blessing. Turn to somebody and say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Tell them, say, with your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing.
You better get your blessing. Your name is on it. You better get your blessing. Your name is on it. <laughs> Please thank the choir. <laughs> now we're going to have our first communal confession. How many people thought he doesn't have a robe on so he's not singing, not speaking this morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm full of surprises, y'all. <laughs> I'm full of surprises. And sometimes life surprises me. The, my title this morning is Keep It Moving. <laughs> Keep It Moving. I learned a great lesson from a staff member of mine in Florida. Her name was Tanya Nice. Last name was Nice. Loved her, loved her. I learned the difference between transactional and transformational relationships from one of my staff members. Tanya was the ICU leader, the open heart recovery, who had, and she had children my age. But we would often talk during the day and things would come up and anything that she mentioned, I would just try to go do because for some reason I thought she was trying to, you know, tell me what to do, and so I just listened. But one day, I walked through the unit to say hi to everyone, and you have to understand when I say hi to everyone, I never stop. I just keep it moving. You know, I, I don't stop, I don't have eye contact with anybody, I just keep it moving. And so she accompanied me as I was going out the door, so I hit the electric switch, which opens the door. Now, all of you have seen in movies and on television, the surgery doors fling open, you know, when you press the button. Well, all the units in the ICU do the same thing. And so I pressed the button and the doors flipped open and she said, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. So as she's talking to me, I never took my hand off the switch. And the doors would time out and get ready to close. And I would press the button and they would open it up again because I was keeping it moving. <laughs> And Tanya looked at me and she eventually said, you know, I know you're a therapist and I know you're used to working with men, but you work with women now, so you're gonna have to listen to me. <laughs> I learned a lesson that day. I learned the difference between a transaction and a transformational relationship. Do you have transactional or transformational relationships? I learned a lot from Tanya. May she rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. So you just got to keep it moving, right? That it's what life calls us to do, that no matter what is going on, you just got to keep it moving. You, you're sitting here this morning, you're going, just keep it moving, keep it moving. Everything just needs to move faster and faster and faster. Where are you going? <laughs> do you need to be somewhere? But you know, we always want to do this. We just, we live in a world that necessarily presses us to accomplish so much. And so we forget sometimes how to live in transformation because we're so worried about the transaction. I often just want to do things and just write a check, but I really don't want to get involved, right? Because it's a transaction, it's not transformational because transformation is ugly sometimes. It's dirty sometimes. All kinds of unexpected things happen when you are in a transformational relationship. But I learned this day from Tanya, and I never will forget it, it changed a bit of how I lead. We just want it easy and to just fix it. But what about life that is so important to you that you're willing to put in the time for it to be transformational? We want change for ourselves. Please, Reverend Rick, tell me how to get my miracle. I just need it to change now. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what if you got to go through a period of time until that miracle shows up? But it's still got your name on it. <laughs> and we're the same way about social justice issues. We don't want to get involved. Many of us don't want to get involved. We just want to provide a transaction. And Everything goes toward the benefit in the end, but just understand that sometimes you have to get involved. We want to keep it moving, but sometimes you have to take the time because we cannot have transformational relationships with a transaction. If everything in our experience is either a call for love or an expression of love, no exceptions, 
Sometimes that takes time. It just takes time. It just can't be a simple transaction of bless your heart and get out of my face, <laughs> right? It may take some more time. <laughs> bless your heart. <laughs> so I'm returning to the, poor, the four pivots, re-imaging justice, re-imaging ourselves by Sean Jenright. Most interactions that we have in life are transactional. It's like paying cash. You remember that thing we used to do? you know, we, about paying cash. It was just a transaction. But many problems in our life are not a transaction. There are things you just have to buy on credit, right? Even if you have an ATM card, you have a relationship with the bank. They want to know where you work, how much money you make, who you slept with, who you owe, and they want to know whether or not you're a good risk for the future. That's transformation because that takes time and you always can be rejected. So before you can do the transaction, in this case, you have to have a transformational relationship. Deep change does not come from a transaction. It comes from a transformational relationship. That's what makes all the difference in the world. We just want to just make it go though. We just want to keep it moving because I just don't have time. I don't know why I don't have time, but I just don't have time. Why have I succumbed to a world that just constantly pressures me to do more and more and more and pressures me to do what they expect me to do, right? That I'm just supposed to just follow through just on a snap of a dime. But everything in our life cannot be a transaction. Some things have to be, but some things have to be transformational. We're talking about the second pivot. The second pivot is connection. The pivot is just a slight change. It's not a total redirection of where you're going. It's just an alteration of where you are. You just guide yourself in a different direction, slowly, gingerly, just a tiny change. And sometimes that's all you need to get your blessing is to make a small pivot. Sometimes that's all it takes. A pivot is not a complete abandonment of the past. The lessons that we have from the past, we take with us as we live through this transformation. We braid them together, the past with the present and the future for all that we wish to be. But that doesn't happen in a transaction. It happens in transformation. The author writes, social change is deeply connected to our healing, our reflection, and our well-being. It's not a transaction. It's a lot deeper than that. There are four pivots we discussed last week. Awareness, connection, vision, and preference. Presence. And last week, I talked about awareness. <laughs> Your asphalt. <laughs> Did you like that line? I loved it. Okay. About looking at life through a lens, but we need to also look at life through a mirror. We have to have some reflection. Remember, blame is giving your power away and responsibility is retaining your power. That's how you have spiritual overcoming power is that you keep responsibility for yourself and where you are. Now, for some people heard me last week that I put them every road in life that they're on, their consciousness put them there. I don't think I said that. In fact, I know I didn't say that because I don't believe that, right? But, but people hear things and you, sometimes you have to clear it up. And so I'm here to talk about your asphalt just a little bit more. Our consciousness don't put, doesn't put us every place that we are. We live in a much larger consciousness. We live in the collective conscience. There's things going on around us that we are subject to, but we can overcome them. That's the difference. Transformation within you lets you overcome the consciousness that is around you. Why do you think that you are so powerful that if you have a bad thought that something bad is going to happen and that every bad thing that happens in your life was based on a thought that you had? But if you are that powerful, then do this. Pray for the six digits for me and the Powerball. Okay, share it with another. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you think it's, and we are just drawn to the negative that something must be wrong other than understanding that we end up on roads sometimes that we didn't choose. But the issue is, is that no matter what road you're on, and yes, it's your asphalt, you can overcome the road that you're on. 
You don't know you're powerful until you end up on the road and you don't know where you are and you need to overcome. You cannot have a transformational relationship with the spirit just easy through. It doesn't work like that. Because why? Because our minds got all kinds of junk in it. All kinds of junk lives in our lens. So, yes, wherever you live up, you didn't create everything that happens bad in your life. You didn't create everything that's happening good in your life. But you have the power if you want, choose to overcome, if you recognize it's your asphalt. And since it's your asphalt, it's your responsibility. However, when we become aware that this is our responsibility and where our asphalt is, we can then take power over the situation. Connection is a transformative relationship. The author writes, one of the lies we believe that we discussed last week is that deep change can be reached through shallow solutions. A shallow solution is a transaction. That's not where we get deep change. Transformative relationship relates to belonging, that you feel that you belong. The class yesterday in Foundations, I kept hearing it from people as they introduced themselves, how they feel at home here. They feel like they belong. There is no greater, greater compliment as far as I'm concerned than to understand that when you walk in the door that you belong and we love you just the way that you are, because it's true. We love you even when you're difficult to love. And you have to love me when it's difficult to love. But belonging requires mutual consent. It's not about abuse, it's mutual consent. It's that each other matter to each other. It's not that I just passed my staff by and I walked past Tanya because I'm keeping it moving. I have to be able to stand there and be present when she needs me to be. That's my job. Regardless of where my mission or where I'm going, because I didn't know I was doing anything special, clearly the work that she was doing was far more important than I was. So belonging is about mutual care, compassion, and the courage that binds people together so they feel they belong, even in a world that tells you that you don't belong. Because there are a lot of messages, depending on who you are, that will tell you that you don't belong. Well, guess what? Your overcoming power says, I'm here, and because I'm here, I belong here. Every place I stand and my feet stand, it's holy ground because I'm there. It's not just for Moses, it's for the rest of us. Wherever your feet are is holy ground. Don't ever forget that. You are a representation of the one power, the one presence of the universe. You have, your uniqueness transcends anything that can happen in life. And let me tell you this, the universe would not be the same without you. You are that important, and it is time to walk in that awareness. Belonging provides us with identity, a sense of meaning, as well as connection and purpose. We have to feel that we belong or we just kind of hang around. But you can get all in. Belonging can be difficult, though, especially when the world tells you that you don't fit. But you still have to keep it moving, even though they're wrong. But love is a matter of relationship and belonging and love is transformational and if god is love and love is all there is that's the transforming power of understanding that that really is all it is all the rest of the stuff is just a condition and everything that is a condition is subject to change you have the authority and the power to speak your word and overcome any condition because of the transformational relationship you get from understanding that god is love and love is all there is but the author writes, the first wrong question is to ask yourself, what should you do? The first question you should ask yourself is, what do we need to become? What do we need to become? We need to become who we are, not something else, who we are. And sometimes that is the hardest thing in the world to do, is to just be who you are. And even though it's hard, it's that transforming power that gives you the possibility to do it. What are you to become? And if you're not sure what that is, 
ask the spirit. Don't ask everybody else. Why would you ask a bunch of people who haven't figured out where they belong and, and what, they, what they're becoming? You can't get that message for anybody else because what's going on, you may have never happened before. What if your blessing that has your name on it is something that's never happened before? Why don't you think you're that valuable? Pray for those six digits in the Powerball for me. <laughs> you know, let's, let's, let's see if it manifests. You, someone can recognize that there may be greatness within you, but nobody really understands the passion and the love that is in your heart, the thing that you're willing to do for free because you just love it and it enriches your life. You know, the one thing I have to say is I have the best job in the world. I have more fun. If you don't have fun here, shame on you because I have the best time. But the thing is, is this relationship we have with spirit can give us guidance where we slowly unfold and we slowly understand exactly who we are to become. It's our divine uniqueness and the universe and all of creation is just waiting for you to come forth. That's why you're here. You contribute to the entire universe's perfect harmony and divine order. You belong because you're here, but I want you to enjoy it while you're here. There are many that are on the journey, but they ain't enjoying the journey. I want you to enjoy the journey, understanding how valuable you are. The universe would not be the same without you. You have a divine purpose just to be you, not to what you do, just to be you. The uniqueness of the spirit that comes out of you is all that you have to be. The rest of it is just window dressing. That's all. But within you lies all that you can become. And we aren't comfortable and settled until we understand and find out what that is. But it is not about doing. It is about being. Your being is far more important than what you do. Because, because you be, you can always change what's going on in your life. And don't live beneath your privilege. Don't live beneath your privilege when all of the universe has been here to make it happen for you. Why is it supposed to happen for everybody else and not you? But it does. It, does. it doesn't have to be big, it just has to be what you are becoming. So you just gotta keep it moving. Keep it moving is an urban expression. It's, it's saying, you know, don't get stuck. Don't dwell where you are, just, just, just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. Avoid getting stuck. Avoid getting trapped and diverted. And on a side road, just, just keep it going. And if you have a, step, a setback, you just keep it moving. No matter what. You keep the main thing, though, the main thing. And when you feel that you don't matter, keep it moving. When you feel you are insignificant, keep it moving. When you feel that you are estranged and separated from the divine, you just keep it moving. Just keep it moving, because if you keep moving, you'll find out you are. If you feel unloved, just keep it moving. But there is another meaning of keep it moving, and that is you keep going. From your transaction to your transformation, you keep going to the deep change that can emerge within you. The writer writes, I need to remember and to press toward the mark of the goal that is before me. So focus on your becoming, focus on your belonging, and reconsider your transactional relationships with yourself. Reconsider a transactional relationship you have with this community or wherever your faith community is. And most importantly, if you have a transactional relationship with the Spirit, I ask that you seek for it to be transformational because there is mutual love and respect and belonging and having a transformational relationship. That's what the Spirit provides for us. So I invite you today that whatever, whoever you are and whatever you're holding back on in life, that it starts unfolding before you so that you get to see it. Because as you see it, you will get the ability to say it. And once you get the ability to say it, you will be able to do it. Because there is power in your word and if that's what you believe. But life is not just a transaction. It is about transformation, and your transformational relationship that you have with the Spirit gives you the power to overcome anything, and so it is.
Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Giving thanks and praise for the power, the power of the Spirit in our lives. There is nothing we can't overcome. Everybody else it has a story. Everybody else has a book, and you read it, and you say, I've been there too. But, but, the gospel of but. And I'm asking you that you put away the gospel of but. Because the gospel of but is you telling yourself that it cannot happen because of something else. And that needs to be transformed. So I speak my word today that all the beauty and all the wonder and all the uniqueness of who you are comes forth today and forevermore, more than ever before. I hope you get on everybody's nerves being who you are. Because maybe that's the rough edge they need to change. I speak my word, I release it and let it go. And so it is. <laughs> as long as you don't get on my nerves. It's time for the offering. <laughs> keep it moving, y'all. Doubt, unbelief, just keep it moving. Today I proclaim my divine inheritance. I give this gift from a consciousness of abundance. Divine love blesses and prospers all that I have, all that I provide, and all that I receive. And so it is. And please welcome back the CSA New Thought Gospel Choir.